sasa si sana ni kuna watu wengi sana wakulima wanaumia kwa sababu hapo katikati kuna proka the beef industry is a very large industry in Kenya but it is underutilized Nairobi now has a big demand for quality beef and in fact we cannot produce enough Yes, it is all about beef farming on the 27th episode of this show. We were the ones who trained people like Botswana, other places. We have gone back to, to learn from them. We will discuss the status of beef farming in Kenya, the production, the market, the value chain, the challenges and opportunities. We will also sample local and international best practices. But first, here is the fact sheet about the sector. Research shows that cattle are the most important source of red meat, accounting for 77% of Kenya's ruminant takeoff for slaughter. Approximately 80 to 90% of the red meat consumed in Kenya comes from livestock that are raised by pastoralists with the remainder coming from highland cattle. Statistics further show that while Kenyan herders account for the majority of Kenya's meat supply, a significant portion, that is 20 to 25 percent, comes from livestock raised in neighboring countries with significant livestock populations. These countries include Ethiopia, Somalia, Tanzania, and Uganda, making Kenya a meat deficit country. Officially in Kenya, according to the census 2009, we have 13 million beef cattle and we have 4 million dairy cattle. There are some other cattle that are in between, the, the dual purpose. We have 27.5 million goats and we have 17.1 sheep. We also have got uh, about 3 million camel. The large cities of Nairobi and Mombasa have the highest per capita meat consumption within Kenya. Kenya does not export much meat. Exports account for only 1% of the country's meat production. The Kenya Meat Commission Abattoir is among the only eight licensed export facilities. Tanzania and United Arab Emirates are Kenya's most consistent markets for meat exports in recent years. Unlike Somalia, which exports millions of live animals every year, Kenya is only a minor exporter of livestock, with the number of head exported never exceeding 7,500 animals in a given year. Somalia is near to United Arab Emirates. The people across the ocean, the sea or the ocean, are also majority of them are Muslims. So there is a sort of negotiated. The only significant markets for Kenya are Mauritius for cattle and Burundi for goats. If you've just joined us, we are discussing beef farming in Kenya. Remember, livestock is a devolved function of government under the parent ministry of agriculture, livestock and fisheries. The current Minister for Agriculture is Willie Bed. The Director of Veterinary Services is in charge of policy formulation, regulation and standards. Then, in each county, there is a County Director of Veterinary Services to oversee implementation. Counties are in charge of functions like movement of animals and intervention in disease outbreak. In 2013, we had about 1850 slaughterhouses in the country which we have licensed. The county directors of federal services in the counties will be in charge of the sanitary mandate, the, the meat inspection, to guarantee food safety. And therefore, they, they, we license, they operate. They, they are the ones doing the day-to-day -day meat inspection and collecting the revenue for that fee. The livestock sector is a key driver of the economies of many counties in the country especially those in arid and semi-arid areas. A lot of the breeds are, are, are the native uh, kind of breeds. So the weight of the carcass when slaughtered is generally low in uh, the arid and semi-arid areas. 
So what we have done as a county is to have a breed upgrading program where we are purchasing uh, better quality breeds and providing it to farmers so that they can transform or they can sire the existing breeds so that they can improve the quality of the breeds. Yet this remains one of the untapped pillars of Kenya's economy. The beef industry is a very large industry in Kenya, but it is underutilized, it is also underrepresented. We should be talking about being beef exporters in Kenya, but you rarely find that we do not even have enough beef in the country today. One of the challenges is inadequate funding. Level of investment is very low, be it from the public and be it from uh, the government. If you look at the Maputo Declaration where 15% of the government GDP was agreed to go to the uh, agricultural sector, in Kenya we are around 6 to 7% in, in progressively going towards 10. But even that money, 90% goes to crop production. So livestock industry has got very little money uh, in, in invested into it as of now. To make it worse, that has been uh, the portfolio of agriculture has been you know, devolved to the counties. There's a very serious challenge in terms of resources. If the, the national government does not have the 15%, the priorities at the county government is even worse because they are talking of salaries now and other priorities, but not livestock. So frankly, where you don't invest, then there's a problem. The national government sometimes has a leverage to negotiate with the multilateral donors uh, or sometimes the multilateral donors work through the National Government Ministry of Agriculture to be able to implement projects, uh, to be able to work together with county, com county governments to implement projects. And so what the National Government has done is uh, to support the county in uh, working with uh, donors, including the World Bank, uh, African Development Bank, uh, and other actors. Livestock sector is uh, contributing about 12% of the gross domestic product of, to this economy. How much is ploughed back to the livestock sector? Forget about the 10% Maputo Declaration of the agri agricultural sector. We do not have enough resources. Lack of a reliable regulatory framework is also a major weakness in the sector. We don't have that regulatory and development aspect of beef. You have Horticulture Development Board, a Coffee Development Board, Tea Development Board, so many other whose function is to develop that sector. In the livestock industry, you have nothing. Nobody has put up an infrastructure to try, I mean, uh, an institution to specifically target the beef and then meet the market demand. The other challenge that I have also seen is there is disconnect between research, the universities, and the producers. People get PhDs, they do very good research, but it rots on the shelves. How do we use that research to ensure that that production and the supply side is taken care of? In Africa, Botswana is one of the few countries that export beef to international markets like the European Union because her livestock sector conforms to international standards. The country has been declared disease-free, but Kenya has yet to be certified by the World Organization for Animal Health as a disease-free country. The most important standard that we have to meet, or by law as one would refer it in some corners, is sanitation. Sanitation where? First, of course, to do with um, toilet facilities. Uh, you know that there are workers in the farms, in the cattle posts, who will always will hit the core of nature. Now, if you do not have a facility or a receptacle for the stuff that is coming, out of the body, after consuming whatever food, then you have a problem. It will end up on the felt, on the grazing area, where the animal will lick and eat. 
And when that animal eats that, in most cases, because of the poor hygiene of some of the people that are handling these animals, then they get infected. So farmers are compelled to have these facilities in their quarters to avoid missiles. Because when your animal, which is slaughtered, has got missiles, then it's a minus. It can be condemned because it does not comply with the standards. And that brings the price of your beef low. What Paswana has done is to create confidence of the high price market that they are able to control diseases, especially mm. food and mouth disease, which is the big problem that we have in this area. Paswana have done what? They make sure that they vaccinate 80% of the, the cattle, again, and the, the animals are susceptible to food and mouth disease, using quality vaccine. We are also doing, we are going towards there, because now we are improving and changing the fabric where we didn't go to produce our oil-based, long-lasting long vaccine. Botswana have also fenced off the, the commitment of the government to fence off the disease-free zone so that you don't have animals or wildlife interacting with the animal intended for the market. The biggest challenge we face in, in Kenya is disease control. Disease, especially foot and mouth disease, is a big constraint to our cattle business. In fact, that is one reason why we can't export a lot of our, not only our beef, but also our breed. People want to buy our animals for breeding. And we're hindered by the state of foot and mouth disease in this country. While pastoralists are the main providers of livestock for beef in the country, observers say new methods like ranching and use of feedlots need to be embraced in order to increase productivity, enhance disease control, quality breeding, and adaptation to the impact of climate change. We were the ones who trained people like Botswana, other places. We have gone back to, to learn from them. Now we have all the information, knowledge that we need. We have the resources. It is only the willpower. We need the, the resources to be directed to the beef sector, and we are there. Like the flowers, it, an industry will thrive when you have private sector get involved more and therefore in, invest more money and develop that industry. We are very well developed in the dairy industry. We take a short break. When we return, we will tell you where to get quality semen for quality beef cattle in Kenya. Stay with us.